It's a small thing, but I guarantee you if you're using a Canon R5 or R6, it's gonna make a big, <laughs> big difference. Let's talk about using the HDMI to trigger your Atomos Ninja 5 or 5 Plus. There are tons of videos out there right now talking about why the Atomos Ninja 5 is such a critical and necessary accessory for the Canon R5 and the R6. And really, in my opinion, this little device right here is the thing that completely and totally unlocks all the potential of your Canon R5 or your R6 if you have that. And I'm not gonna get into every single detail, but it lets you get around overheating. It lets you record raw so much easier. So many benefits come from this recorder. But I was recently doing a shoot the other day where I came across something that actually surprised me. I had a friend of mine who has another Atomos and a Canon R5, and he was missing the key step of using the HDMI trigger to hit his recorder. Now, for those of you that don't know that, this is a small thing that makes a huge difference when you're shooting. And for those of you that don't know what this is, basically, it's pretty easy. If I have a camera here, if I hit the record button, you will see instantly, I get a recording up here up top on my Atomos and I get a recording down on my camera. When I hit stop, both systems stop recording at the exact same moment. I don't have to think about it. I don't have to hit any other buttons. It just happens. So now that I talked about it, it's very, very easy to set up. Let's talk about setting up. Now, a couple of ways that if you come here in your uh, menu, you can actually see I have the HDMI raw output. So if I want to shoot raw by default, I cut that on and you will see that it cuts on by default. It says, okay, it switches to raw. It'll warn me about performance and I hit record and you can see it instantly starts working through the HDMI. But the great news is you don't have to do this in just raw. That's what's really, really important. So I'm gonna come back to my menu here and I'll cut raw off now. Now, the first thing you gotta do is actually a little bit tricky and you actually have to come here in your camera menu and you need to go to the last area, which is menu number eight on the Canon R5. And you're gonna see a time code uh, input. And this is where it gets a little tricky. Click on time code and if you go down the bottom, you'll see an HDMI input. And look at that, record command, cut it to on. First thing you gotta do. It's kind of hidden, it's a little bit tricky, so you need to know that that's there. And what's good now is I can basically use any of my other recording options here to record. The only thing you can't send up to your Atomos, this is a Ninja 5 Plus, is the 8K standard. Like, uh, for whatever reason, the HDMI will only take 8K raw, it will not take uh, 8K, if you have all I or IPB, it's not gonna come up here to your camera, but uh, AK raw will, but everything else you have access to your camera. Now, one thing I recommend doing is if you're here, is I would go ahead, first off, come over here to your menu and come over here to HDMI resolution in your settings and make sure that is set to auto on a Canon R5. A lot of times that'll happen is sometimes you can have it so it goes to 1080p as a default. Uh, sometimes you need this if you're having wireless monitors that only max out at 1080p or something like that. But the Atomos has no problem with the 4K even the 8K raw signals. So make sure you set that on auto so make sure you're getting the best quality HDMI signal that you can get. And now if you come here on your Atomos, if you come here, you can literally come up here and you'll see HDMI trigger. Just make sure that it's clicked to on and you will be good to go. And then when you hit record, you will get the double record options from the Canon R5 and the R6. And it is really just that simple. There's not a whole lot to that. And really the only thing about the system that's a little frustrating that I wish Canon would fix with a firmware update is this. You can see right here, I can hit record and get a double record right there. But if I pop out my card and have no card and no media inside my camera, when I go to record, I cannot do it if there's not a card in there. For some reason, if I do not have media inside the card, it will not let me record straight to the Atomos without hitting the 
media in the camera. And this is really frustrating. I really don't like this Canon because, you know, sometimes you just wanna have that recording and I really love the option in like my Panasonic GH5, I could do the exact same thing and not have to have a card inserted there. I could just use this just as a recorder if I wanted to use that for some reason and I wasn't forced to always have media in my slot. And what's really weird about this, if you look at this when you're shooting in RAW, you can actually do this in RAW. I can go to my RAW menu. If I put my RAW output to on, you can see I have my card right here. It's not in the camera. If I hit OK, now it'll record. It's not recording internally. It's only recording up here to the Atomos. I hit stop. But if I switch to a non-RAW setting, I can't do the same thing. So it tells me the camera is absolutely able to trigger the Atomos without having physical media in there. And for whatever reason, it won't let you do it in any other format than RAW. That is frustrating. I do not like that. I hope it is addressed in a firmware update, but we'll just have to see. That's pretty much all I have to say about this. I really think this is one of those things, if you're not doing it, go ahead and just click that on and make sure you're doing it because it makes your camera so much more powerful and it really makes that Atomos integrated in your system, and I think it's gonna really change the way you shoot. Anyway, guys, that's all I have to say about that. I would love to hear what you have to say about this. Please leave me any comments or questions down below. Yeah, go there, keep on shooting, and uh, yeah, I'll talk to you soon.